this asshole right here wants to start an insurrection at the table against the Games Master's authority. Look, you can play a game however you want, right? You, you can do whatever you want. That's always been the way with role-playing games. They've always had this huge kind of um, DIY element to them, which is why I don't tend to have a lot of tolerance for the idea that games, role-playing games, have not ever been inclusive or, or welcoming or whatever else. There didn't used to be a lot of art in a lot of books and it was usually black and white line art and a lot of it was fairly crude early on, quite um, racially ambiguous, even gender ambiguous in a lot of ways. And it was clear, you know, it was implicit that you could do whatever you wanted, you could hack the rules, you could do everything differently. So I've never had much tolerance for that. But, but even so, two broad schools of how to play, even though I wouldn't dictate to anyone really how to play, two broad schools have emerged. On the one hand, you have the kind of um, rules-first approach, which uh, sometimes disparagingly gets called role-playing with two L's, as in roll the dice. It's not really fair because story does emerge from that mode of play. When you play in that way, you're immersing yourself in the world. The world makes sense. The world is reactive. The rules are your guide and the story emerges from what happens. You can get blindsided. You never quite know what's going to happen, but you have an idea that when you roll the dice, you know, there are certain outcomes that could occur. You know, a, a character who you are really invested in could die. So there's a sense of risk and engagement and, and so on. So that's a kind of rules first story emerges. This is the, the model that a lot of people go for. And that immersion is the goal of role playing for a lot of people where you're reacting as your character, where the world seems consistent and, and makes sense. The other style that has emerged is much more of a story first game where the, the story takes precedence, it's right at the center and everything serves the story. There are often story mechanics around that. Um, genre emulation is, a, is an early-ish form of that. Later on you get things like narrative buy-in from players and so on. So they can introduce an element that the Games Master then has to incorporate or they can shift and alter the story in some way or introduce a new element. Done right, this is really good because it takes a lot of the, the weight, the heavy lifting off the Games Master's shoulders. But it does also undermine the Games Master's authority at the table. Now, my instinct is always to be anti-authoritarian, <laughs> being a bit of an anarchist, but Anarchism is about the creation of voluntary order, right? Not that there is no leadership or, or no hierarchy, but that it's voluntary and consensual. And when you sit down at the table to play a game, you're entering into a social contract with the people at the table, and you are deferring authority to the games master. The games master makes the rules calls. The games master is the referee. The games master is supposed to be impartial they're supposed to make for an enjoyable game but a game that's consistent that makes sense that aids you in your immersion and so on so completely undermining the authority of the games master treating them as just another player when it is a lot more work and that's worthy of respect that doesn't tend to work so well so here comes this guy right and like I say you play a game whatever you want I'm I'm grumpy I've got the the hangover of a migraine at the moment so perhaps I'm being less charitable than I than I otherwise would but this tweet thread has got some traction and it's presenting the idea that even in non story games you can basically buck the games master's authority you can say no Right, and not know about a, a particularly morally or ethically difficult thing. Not not know to being forced to play out in graphic detail some kind of scene that you don't like, but know to the consequences of something that your character does. The example that he gives in the thread is that he dove after his character's boyfriend to try and save them after they after they fell off a cliff. 
right? You do that in the knowledge that your character might die in the attempt, right? And that's what lends that action meaning, right? So you, you, you take your falling damage, and maybe if you're high level, not that this makes any sense, you might survive or you might not. Did you take the right feats? Can you tumble? <laughs> yeah, these sorts of things, depending which version of D&D that you play. But, yeah, if, if the GM says, okay, fair enough, you, 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 you're sacrificing yourself, well, let's see whether you survive, roll some dice and, and see what happens, and, and you die, you really can't just turn to the GM and say, no, I don't, right? They're talking about just, just insisting, right, bucking what happens. But if the risk of death isn't there, is that sacrifice meaningful? Yeah, and there's, there's any number of other situations that this can that this can occur in. Um, now, to an extent, the games master should be accommodating, right? If they think that's a bad time for your character to die, they can always fudge the dice or, or shift what happened. And what happened in this circumstance was that the games master and the other players kind of kind of dealt with it. But that doesn't alter the fact that just flat refusing and overturning what the games master has told you has happened is a bit of a richard maneuver right it undermines the games master if this isn't explicitly a story game where you have mechanics for doing this kind of thing yeah it, it it's pretty alien and it goes against immersion and it goes against the way that these games are supposed to operate and again you can play however you want you know i'm not going to dictate to you the one true way of role playing but this is potentially a, a very dangerous and game-wrecking idea that you can just flat out refuse when something happens to your character, especially when it's the result of something that you've done. You're denying yourself the meaningfulness of the action. You're denying the plausibility and reactiveness of the world, and you're wrecking immersion in the pursuit of story which is more of an issue when it comes to non-story games like D&D, which is what I, I think this game was. Sure, you can spare your character and you can get a story out of it where the person you were trying to save disappears and you wash up with one hit point on the shore somewhere, which is what happened in this, in this tweet thread. But there's another story where your character did die or disappear or whatever else, and where the other characters have to scare up whatever they need to pay a, a priest to resurrect you, or they mourn you and they bury you and your heroic sacrifice means something and boosts their reputation in the kingdom or whatever else. That's story too, and it's a good story. Bucking the GM just because you want your character to live isn't a good way to go about it. There's, there's meaning in failure, there's learning in failure, and there is story in failure. And it's not the kind of story that you typically get in books or movies or TV series or whatever else. It's something that's pretty unique and special to role-playing games, to find meaning when a bad role happens. The character dies a seemingly meaningless death. And many of the great stories <laughs> that we share as players later on come from moments like that. I'll share one quickly. Uh, we were playing a D&D &D game, but not using D&D &D rules, using uh, rules for a horror game, Blood, which I happen to publish, but that's, that's by the by. Um, so we wanted to just play something gritty and horrific in a kind of dungeon setting. This was many years ago now. In the first encounter, the first little group of goblins that they found, <laughs> the first goblin rolled a crit and stabbed the fighter in the eye, half blinding him. And on his second roll, got exactly the same thing. <laughs> Not... Not 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 great for the for the fighter in this instance, but it's a story that we tell and we retell over and over again because it's just funny and it's just bad luck. 
And those are stories at a meta level that we can all, all enjoy as well. Zang. <laughs>